any discussion, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pauline. That's excellent work. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the hearings panel report to the council on the Colombo Street cycle route connection um, and Councillor Mike Davidson, if I could invite you to present that. Mm. Firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge Pauline and Anne's very detailed introduction to their um, reports. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to take my report as read. <laughs> I will just acknowledge uh, Jimmy and Catherine who, who sat on the, the hearings panel with myself. Um, it was actually a, a very good um, hearings panel. Uh, there was a, a few changes made to it, which is all within the report and the decision. Our recommendation was unanimous. Happy to move it to. Thank you. Sorry, Catherine's happy to second it. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, were there any questions? Aaron and then Pauline. Uh, yeah, I had a, a couple of questions. One was around the uh, uh, the change made around the well, the request around the timing at BLEF. Where did that come from, and why was there um, a, a not for a change? So I've gone through a lot of times, and I've not seen people not be able to get through because of the timing. And I know that it affect traffic on BLEF. So, you know, it, perhaps we could have staff at the table too for this one. Is that we're up to the Colombo Street? Yep, thank you. Oh, if it's his last one, I've got heaps of questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, if you're happy to answer it, then that's fine. But if it's a question for staff, then that's fine too. Well, I think one of the key things is it's an investigation. Um, so there were a number of submitters that were concerned with the length of the, the crossing time that they got, and they just made them very uh, uncomfortable and nervous, but it, that it changed quite quickly. So it's just investigating the crossing times, because obviously any um, change does have a, a wider network effect. So we just wanted to have a look to make sure that it is uh, actually suitable for what we're trying to achieve. OK, and then the next one is on the uh, detailed design up on the bridge. Uh, the I thought we'd originally signed off three disability car parks there. Um, you know, on the left-hand side, for using the town hall, but we and this new plan has one each side, and I uh, think there's an an there might be an answer to it. But I'll get staff to answer. There's three. Yeah. There's two on one side, one on the other. But staff oh. can answer if there was. Um, so we do have three parks there and it's come down to what space is available yep. so one of those parks is for um, vehicles that require a lot more space um, where you've got to get wheelchairs in and out and having from the rear as well as side of the, the parking space. The other two on the town hall side are for the smaller um, for people that don't have those needs as, as much um, and it really has come down to how much space we've got available and being able to fit everything in safely so that's why it's changed to what it is. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and I thought that was the case, but I thought it's just to raise it here. And then um, the final one is how many metered car parks are uh, removed in the plan? Can you count it, was it half a dozen? Well, that, can, while they're working out the answer to that, there was a concern from some businesses um, around the, the loss of the um, parking by, by their um, businesses. Um, so one of the things that we asked was actually, because there's a lot of, um, I guess, unlimited parking, unlimited time parking around that area. So we said, well, what we'll do is we'll actually look at that, those um, unrestricted time parks and actually move some of the restricted times park there to try and ensure that actually they had those turnover parks avail available for the businesses. Yeah, I saw, saw that. It made sense. Yeah. So how many metered ones? Um, there's actually no change to the number of metered parks in the, between Bailey and um, Kilmore Street. It's just down between Kilmore Street down to the bridge. There was some metered parking that was there that's been taken out because um, there's a, I guess, a desire not to yep. try and restrict, so um, make people pay for the time-restricted parking in that section. 
So how many metered ones come out down there? Was it six, five? I think it's about six, yeah. Yeah. I can confirm that if you'd like. Okay, only because the question I ask, and it's not just on this report, it's on every single time we do any of these, is we don't have financial implications in the report of taking out metered car parks. So the loss of income, we have the cost of the project, but we don't factor that in, and I, I don't think that's right. We should factor it in. It, it is possible to do an amendment that every time we remove a metered car park, we replace another one. Does, is it metered with a metered one, if you'd like? Oh, I like that. I'll, I like that. I'll take that. Yeah. Yep. Kind, of, kind of like the tree policy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we just get a bit of creep, but we move it to where it's needed. Cause, okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, it's, uh, Mike's going to well, add that, I think. I think it probably is going to fall under the... Um, sorry, I'm going off topic now. But it'll fall underneath the um, parking policy, central city parking policy. Uh, yeah, and finally, one last question. Given that this is a, a temporary, well, the longest temporary I think I've seen since I've been here, but uh, it's a temporary 10-year programme, why was it not given the treatment like the ferry road treatment? You know, the new bit up, the, you know, the tactical urbanism uh. thing. <laughs> so the ferry road um, project has been done under the Innovating Streets program of work, which is 90% funded by Waka Kotahi. Um, and that is really cool. Um, this project's been going for, what, two or three years already, um, just trying to get a design together that meets all the needs of what we're trying to achieve. Um, and so it hasn't actually been subject to those same sort of processes. It's actually been quite lengthy and it's more of a typical council project, if I could say it that way. So it's actually followed our normal kind of council process. The Ferry Road project has actually followed quite an innovative and quite time constrained um, process. So it's actually going to be really interesting for us and we want to do a bit of an evaluation on the time and cost spent between the two. So it's, it's actually been quite useful having the two projects happen at the moment. So that's helpful. That will be very helpful to see that. Uh, Pauline. Thanks. Um, it's also on the um, similar area to Aaron's on page 277. If you're cycling um, down Colombo Street going south, then you cross over the Kilmore intersection. Um, from that point to the pedestrian and cycle crossing into Victoria Square is a real pinch point, and I'm quite surprised mm. to see you put yep. the cyclists on the road, and I wondered why you didn't put them onto the big wide footpath. Because for me personally, I'm more comfortable cycling on the footpath there. Yeah, that's something that was, was considered, um, and we were aware of that, that constraint. One of the, the biggest reasons why we didn't is that we have those mobility parking spaces on that side, and we didn't want to be funneling all our cyclists past mobility parking spaces on a, on a footpath. Um, and it also would have required sort of a detailing and a merge of the, of the riders back onto the road around that crossing somewhere as well. Um, so we're looking at how we can further enhance that merge, and just so that can we we can slow those vehicles down and make the merge um, safer for cyclists, which will be considered during It's the, really quite yeah. nasty, and particularly if you're cycling and then you want to turn right into Victoria Square. That's really tricky. If you you can either go out into the middle of the road, which is as skinny as heck, mm -hmm. and you're stuck there with cars coming straight at you, and or else you go onto the footpath and, and line up and cross there. I I'm kind of not very happy with that solution. And would that not have been, would it not actually, even though it's not perfect to go on the footpath, you still thought that was not a better option? Um, I mean, it, it's, it's possible that people could do that. Um, there, is a, there will be a cut down there that people can get onto the Avon River um, path. Um, yeah. So some may choose to do that if they're less confident to stay on the road. Okay. All right. <coughs> All right. So, uh, Yanni? Yeah, I was just. Um I was just a little bit concerned. Thank you for the response to my question around emergency services like fire, ambulance and the police. But it, it didn't appear we'd received any feedback from them. And I'm just really concerned that, you know, we've previously heard sometimes of concern that they have with their vehicles. So have we had no feedback from them? And is there any process that we can go back to them to get feedback? So um, they are on our key stakeholder list, so they get advised of all our projects. Um, generally what happens is if they do have an issue, they will come back to us, and it's, we have quite a good working relationship through with all those agencies, and that if there is no issue, then we can kind of take it as read that they are happy. Um, so that's the basis on which, I mean, obviously they are restrained, constrained with their resources and time, so they tend to respond to us where they have issues. If they don't have issues, they don't come back to us. 
I mean, that, I just, that's, that's the way it's, it's yeah. going at the moment. Yeah. Okay. I, I just sort of thought with like the new fire station being built close by, um, that it would be good to have something in writing from, from them. We can't force them. Do we, do we call them as well and say, hey, we've sent you this engagement, we haven't heard back? You, you've, sorry, Yana, you've just heard from staff that they um, have a relationship with them and they have assured us that they um, receive feedback when they've got issues of concern to raise. So I, I'm happy to accept what staff have advised um, and if they want to think about how that gets reported in the papers in the future, I think that would be a useful way of resolving that. The other thing is um, some of the submitters raised concern around... I guess it's kind of the design of cars turning maybe left or right and then being stuck with the traffic behind you. Um, so I just wondered, th this looks like a kind of similar design as like Selwyn Street and Brougham Street um, in the intersection. I'm just wondering if, if we've done any sort of, if we had any feedback from the safe pre, -con pre um, construction safety audit or whether we would get any feedback around the safety because you know where we've got pinch points and people waiting in traffic, you, you can see quite an impact on, and especially a risk for a cyclist um, when there's a, a, you know, a cyclist going ahead of someone turning left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess to, um, maybe a couple of things there, but to, and in order to, in terms of holding traffic up, um, we can only have no impact on the, the through traffic if there's three separate vehicle lanes for the, for the turning, well, as the through traffic. Um, which there isn't space for at this location uh, without really taking the footpath down to a, a bare minimum. Um, in terms of safety, um, yeah, we're sort of aware of, I guess, concerns from submitters around turning vehicles, and we will be looking more at what we can do to um, just make that phasing safer at those intersections um, for cyclists and turning vehicles through detailed design. So on Bailey Ave, does the cyclist get a, a straight ahead light or...? That, that's one of the things that um, the hearings panel has asked staff to go and investigate. If we put additional time into for cyclists, what's the wider impact of that? And we need to understand that before we just put it at one section and make sure that we don't make a bigger impact, adverse impact on the wider network. But we have been asked to go away and investigate that. And, and, and also um, with the Beely app, we were looking at investigating the potential of putting a, a bit more um, protection in for cyclists and actually maybe a return light to stop cars turning over in front of it. So that's an area that I've, we have concern about um, and our staff to do a little bit more investigation on it. Right, is that all with questions? Uh, Aaron, sorry. So I had one you more. Did, and you I did thought, have your hand up. Yeah, uh, it, it was just, why is the whole lot not shadowed? It just it starts at Kilmore, doesn't it, and goes through there. Why did, what was that not a consideration? Because early on when that was the original route chosen, that was one of the ideas nearly 10 years ago. But so by um, shadowed, you mean like a, a calm, low-speed environment where the cyclists would share the lane with traffic? Yeah, well, I think so. You've got the shadow symbol yeah. on the plan There's that's a, getting painted the, on the, the road. The, so the, the, there are a few shadows at the left turn lanes at intersections. Right. Um, the markings that are in the lanes were a road art, which is a was a sort of a shadow pattern, but it was yep. really just a road art feature rather than a, a shared lane feature. Oh, oh so it's not actually... So... When you go over Kilmore and you're in Colombo going south, that yeah, the uh, yeah, 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 that shows at that point. So yeah, so so oh, from, right. for, 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 from Kilmore Street heading south would be a, a shadow, so a shared area where it merges into um, cyclists and vehicles here in the space, which is what's uh, there at the moment. And given that that's 30k and so's the other way, why was the whole lot not given that consideration? Because if you want to drive somewhere quick and get on a real road and do 50, but if you want to share it meander along with the cyclist, you come down here. So to, I guess, to make the whole of um, Clumber Street, I guess, to be able to share in a shared lane, uh, we need to get the vehicle speeds down lower and the volumes down lower than what they are. And so to get those volumes down lower, there's going to be some quite heavy turn restrictions at some point. Right. Uh, which is yeah. And it drops by Kilmore. Enough. Uh, yeah, it does, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. All right, so that's all the questions. Um, and uh, Mike, you've moved it. Oh, and Councillor Chu's second it, right. Um, is there any debate? Um, Aaron? 
Yeah, I, I'll just um, thank the uh, panel for doing the work they did and the staff. I actually uh, really like this design. Um, I think there's some real positives here. Uh, and uh, unlike um, Pauline, who, uh, when she gets to Colombo Kilmore, should have to go on the, the path for the people that go real slow and nervously. But I'd stay in the middle of the road, especially if I had an e-bike. I think I'd just stay in the middle of the road and do that 30k an hour that you can. But And it's downhill there as well. But beyond that, I think the design's fantastic. It's clarifying. We do have choice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, and, and to be um, to be specific, it's actually uphill when you get to the bridge. Thank you, thank you. We're all not chatting amongst each other, but I'm going to now abuse my position as chair and um, acknowledge Richard Osborne and thank him for all of the work that he's done uh, for us here at the council. And I think councillors actually want to acknowledge him for him. Thank you, Richard. You've been an amazing um, support for the council. You've always responded to issues that have been raised and. Um, you know, this is the last paper that's going through, so I just thought I'd I'd cheat embarrass and uh, yeah, embarrass you. Has that been successful? Yes. Excellent, Lovely. excellent. Right, right, right. <laughs> Mike, did you want to speak further? Oh, no, I think I don't need to speak to this. Actually, it's but. <laughs> no, no, it's actually saying quite important. The first resolution, I think, is actually a little bit of an error, um, and it says to report back to the hearings panel, um, where it should say the Urban Development Committee. I'm uh, sure that nobody's going to mind if we quickly adjust yeah. the error. Yeah, it's just a... One, yeah, 1A and 1B. Yeah, yeah. It should be Urban... Development Transport Committee? Yeah. What can we do? Well, except that it was just delegated it to the... Um, the well, the, the hearings panel is no longer in existence. So. Right. Yeah. OK. That's cool. It just means it has to come back to a full meeting now. <laughs> well, we could, we could what about delegate to the chair? Delegate it to, to a subcommittee. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 but it was the it's hearings so panel to have continued life. Okay, it yeah, it can come. Life. No. no. Okay, all we'll, right. We'll sort it out. We'll sort it out. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you. Sorry? Oh, Yanni opposed, right, okay. Um, so it's 12.56. We're obviously going to have to come back after lunch, which... Are we? There's not that much more. Do you know what well, there's, there's not much more to do, but I have...